This week on Maker Update, Halloween on Wheels, a mini printer from Prusa, Arduino Fog Machine, Robot Centipede, What's Inside LED Neon, and 3D printed press brakes. Hey, I'm Donald Bell and welcome back to another Maker Update. How's everybody doing? Halloween is in the air and this show is packed full of spooky projects, so let's get started with my pick for the project of the week. On the I Like To Make Stuff channel, Bob Claggett has a great video on how he made a mobile Halloween trick-or-treat experience on wheels. The cart includes an inflatable spider that sits on a platform with two cordless leaf blowers underneath it. One leaf blower is set up to push a stream of toilet paper from a roll mounted in front of it. That's the trick part. The other leaf blower is set up to gently launch a handful of candy, and that's the treat part. One cool tip from this video is that Bob found that, at least for this model of leaf blower, that you could replace the barrel with 4 inch PVC pipe. Not only does this allow you to extend the barrel to any length you need, but you can also use standard PVC elbow joints and fittings to create whatever you want. The other tip I thought was interesting was how he powered the inflatable spider using a portable jump start battery. The one he went with was $130 with a built in inverter, inflator, USB ports, all the bells and whistles. Absolutely overkill for this project, but as Bob points out, it's a super useful thing to have handy after Halloween, either for your car or for other projects. It's time for some news. Prusa Printers, makers of the insanely popular $999 MK3 3D printer, have announced their first small budget printer called the Original Prusa Mini. The printer is $349 and has a cubic print volume of seven inches by seven inches by seven inches. For a budget printer, you're getting a lot of the features found on the bigger version, plus a color screen that the big version doesn't even have. The only catch I see here is that there's some assembly required, which for some people is just an instant deal breaker. It really doesn't look complicated though, and I think it's a great move from Prusa to expand their customer base. Now for more projects on Instructables, DIY Machines has a guide on making this smartphone controlled dry ice fog machine perfect for Halloween. The design uses a bucket with a lid, an Arduino Nano, a Bluetooth module, motor driver breakout board, geared DC motor, a pencil holder, and two contact switches. Inside the bucket, the dry ice sits in a little metal pencil holder held above the water on a 3D printed arm. When the Arduino is triggered over Bluetooth, the arm lowers the ice into the water and creates the fog. A 3D printed vent on the bucket lid helps direct the fog a little. He's also included an enclosure design to hold all the electronics and batteries. It's a great little project. For something far more involved and far creepier, check out this remote controlled drill powered centipede by Izzy Swan. The creature is designed around 280 CNC cut pieces of plywood with interconnected drive shafts that spin within each segment of the body. Each of these shafts spin a worm gear which drives the feet, then to steer it, 20 kilogram servos in the first three segments work to shift the direction left or right by remote control. It's a wickedly awesome robot and the sound it makes as it marches around is music to my ears. It's time now for some tips and tools. Jimmy DeResta pulled an oldie from the vault on how he made a series of kindergarten tables. It's one of those projects that today he would probably just throw at a CNC router, but it's so cool to see how he got these factory-like results just by using common power tools. A lot of it just comes down to designing around a template piece and then using a pattern router bit to copy that design onto other pieces. Definitely worth a watch if you want to work on making reproducible designs from a small workshop. Also on YouTube, the practical engineer shows how he made this hammer machine for knocking loose rusted parts. It's not a tool I need, but it's great how he shows an approach to harnessing the power of mechanical timing. Using just a few different cams on the same rotating axle, he's able to automatically pull the hammer up and down with alternating sprays of WD-40. The cams rotate around until they press up against a series of limit switches, activating the solenoids that trigger the spray. Sometimes I get my head so focused on solving problems with Arduino, I neglect to think of these clever old school ways to create mechanical sequences. Over on the Cool Tools channel, I've got an interview with artist Chris Rummel on his favorite two grid rulers for model making and lettering. They're cheap too, so if you don't have something like this, it's worth a look. Big Clive has a video teardown of different styles of neon LED strip. This stuff is great and it's become much more affordable to get your hands on, but not so cheap that you want to cut it open and peek inside. So let Big Clive do that for you. Maker's Muse has a great video on must have 3D printing tips and tricks. 
In this first part of the video series, he goes over design tips, mostly in Fusion 360, but still applicable for whatever design software you're using. He also makes a compelling case for why we can and should stop using STL files. One of the more surprising uses for 3D printing I've seen recently are these metal break forming tools by Proto-G. These are PLA plastic forms that he's using to bend and shape metal. There's a whole instructable on how and why he's doing it, but essentially the how is by using 12 perimeters on his sliced files to create extra reinforcement. The why is to be able to quickly create custom dies for his projects, reducing turnaround time and cost. Issue 20 of Gareth Bramlin's Tips, Tools, and Shop Tales newsletter has some great tips, including one from Eric Strebel on finishing foam core and cardboard prototypes with EVA foam skin that you can heat up and mold to create organic compound curves. I also want to remind everyone that Sunday, October 27th, I'll be at the East Bay Mini Maker Fair in Oakland, California. I'll have a table set up there with a bunch of projects that I featured on this show. So if you're around, come by and say hello. For this week's DigiKey Spotlight, check out this power strip with an integrated relay board from Digital Loggers. It's one of my favorite tools for Halloween and Christmas projects. You can get it for under $30 and you get an always on outlet for powering your project board and then three other outlets that are switched on or off when your board sends out a five volt signal. Basically, if you want an Arduino to turn something on and off that connects to household power, this is a quick and safe way to get that done. No splicing power cords, no frying project boards, and it's something that you can reuse again and again. You can find it on DigiKey using the link in the description. And that does it for this week's show. Be sure to subscribe, leave a thumbs up, or leave a comment. You can get on the Maker Update email list to get show notes automatically emailed out to you. A big thanks to my patrons on Patreon and to the awesome DigiKey Electronics for sponsoring this show, putting it on their channel, and just generally having all the stuff you need for your projects. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you next week.